Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 14 of Learn Lightroom 6, also called Lightroom CC. In this episode, we're going to be doing selective color. Now, selective color is one of those topics that those photography critics, those people that know everything there is to know about photography, really criticize. They call it so 1980s or that it's juvenile and who knows what else. My feeling is if you like it, if it is a way for you to express yourself, I believe you should do it and not listen to those critics. And if you are one of those photography critics that think that selective color is juvenile or whatever, um, I would suggest you not watch this video because why would you care? So really um, what I'm trying to say is if you enjoy any photography technique HDR selective color whatever do it um, express yourself the way you see fit you have every right to now we're gonna do a couple different images and over the years I've seen uh, several different ways to do selective color on an image and I still believe the best way is with a brush and we're gonna be doing both of these image images with a brush but before we do let me just show my settings and camera that I used for this image because often I forget to show my settings and people email me asking me what the settings were for a specific shot. So on this image I used a Fujifilm X-T1 camera as a RAW file. It was 1 800th of a second at f13 ISO 800 and it was a 23 millimeter lens. Okay. So I mentioned that I think the most efficient way is to use a brush and it's really relatively simple. So what we're going to do first is we're going to reset these brush settings by double clicking on effect. So that put all the brush settings back at zero. Really all you have to do is turn saturation all the way down and paint on the image where you don't want color and you're all set. Now I specifically chose this image because I wanted to demonstrate something that might cause an issue. Uh, let's say I ultimately what I want is just these um, eyes colored and everything else black and white. But for the sake of showing this you this issue you might encounter, to start out with, I'm going to leave the entire electrical box colored and everything else black and white. And what you need to do then is mask around the electrical box. So the way you would do that is down here we're going to have auto mask checked and we're going to have flow all the way at 100 and density all the way at 100 and we're going to have just a really just a softly feathered brush not very much like 10 that's fine. And the first thing you want to do when you want to mask something out is do that first. So we have these settings, we have saturation all the way down, and we have a softly feathered brush, flow and density at 100, and auto mask is checked. And get a, a brush that is adequately sized. And you can see now, specifically when I'm painting up in the sky here, I am overlapping across the electrical box but I am only taking the paint away from the sky. Now where the image is a little more complex, it's a little more problematic. I don't know if you notice, it looks like there's a little color up in here around this guy's jacket. It looks like he might have a water bottle on his belt. Now we're gonna go across the bottom and go up this way. It did a good job where it was simple, meaning the solid sky, but where it starts to get a little busier is where it's going to have a problem. Now if I left auto mask checked and I do one swipe across the top of the sky here, you could see we still have color in the street lights. And it, you know, really I go across here too. You could see that the yellows tend to really be difficult to brush away when you have auto mask checked. So what I would suggest you do if you're going to mask something out, for example this electrical box, do that first. Then take the check away from auto mask and maybe even pull feathering all the way down to zero. Then do the rest of the image. And you could see one swipe and it took the color pretty much out of those street lamps and it took the color out of those houses back there that still had yellow on it. So that's the easiest, I think, way to accomplish what you want to do. 
is by using auto mask first when you need it if you plan on using it I should say okay now I eyeballing it it looks like I pretty much caught everywhere uh, maybe I missed it so what we're gonna do or missed a spot what we're gonna do is hover over the little button for the brush and you could see that um, I did decently I did miss a spot around this guy's leather jacket and that was because masking was on auto mask was on so actually the brush masked itself around there even though I did draw right across that so now we have to be much careful more careful that we do not uh, bleed over and accidentally paint some of the color away from the electrical box now if you accidentally do paint some of the color away all you have to do is hold the alt or option key in that's the alt key if you have a, a PC and the option key if you have a Mac and you could see that it uh, the brush turned into a minus sign in the middle there that means we're going to undo my mistake just like that so that's that's pretty decent so I'm gonna leave the electrical box colored for now because I want to show you another problem um, no actually I'm gonna color it away I'm gonna color it away as I mentioned I really ultimately just want these eyes colored so what we're gonna do is we're going to quickly oops get a little smaller brush paint away color in the rest of the electrical box okay and we have now just those eyes are colored okay now all right that's technically selective color we have just those eyes colored but it really isn't that I guess outstanding so I want to enhance those eyes so one good way to do it is you just go to the HSL color B&W tab and we're going to go to the saturation of the red and watch what happens when I turn it up you can see the red is coming back in this painted brick on the electrical box I really don't want that I really just want that the eyes whatever is in the eyes to be enhanced you can see everything else is coming up so what you could do I'm going to turn leave saturation at plus 100 we're going to go back to our brush we're going to go to that first brush we the only brush actually we brushed on the image and we're going to click on that so it's active we're going to right click on it now and we're going to just choose duplicate and you could see that just duplicating it eliminated that red that is right uh, that came out when I turned that red saturation up so that's something you could keep in mind you could always du duplicate your brush it's like putting two brushes on one on top of the other so I want to enhance these eyes further so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a second brush so we're gonna double click on new we're gonna reset the sliders there's only one slider though, but we'll reset it we'll double click on effect and we're going to go to saturation but this time we're gonna turn it all the way up we're gonna leave auto mask unchecked feathering all the way down and I'm going to get a brush that is probably approximately the size of the eye and voila now we have really kind of more enhanced the image so this is a pretty decent example of selective color the the entire image is black and white but these eyes which are staring at the cameraman me um, are in color so that's kind of in a nutshell how it's done and it's really not that difficult so we're gonna do another one uh, this one is a little more common example of what a photographer might use selective color for I'm sure you've probably seen uh, portraits of kids specifically usually and they'll be black and white but especially if the kids have blue eyes the photographer will leave their eyes blue and we're gonna do this with this picture of my son Joe uh, again before I start forgive me for those of you that don't care but a lot of people care about what camera and settings I used on this specific image it was a Nikon D800 E it was 1 200th of a second at f8 uh, ISO 100 uh, I used a 70 to 200 f a 2.8 lens and I was at 140 millimeters and um, I used a flash I remember I used a flash I had an on-camera flash so I had a SB 910 flash on the camera so 
that's that. Now, what we're going to do here is going to be probably a little simpler than that last one. There really isn't a lot of masking to do around the eyes. So we're going to get our brush, and again, we're just going to turn saturation all the way down. I'm going to leave auto masking off. We're going to get a pretty big brush, and we're just going to brush across the image and avoid his eyes right now. We'll refine it more when, um, as I as I get there. Now you can see um, it's a little more delayed on this image. That's because it's a raw file from a Nikon D800E and it's a humongous raw file. So it is a little more delayed. The larger your file, the slower usually Lightroom will respond. Okay, so we have them looking like a raccoon right now. So we're going to try to improve this. Now, one odd thing I found about me, at least, is for Photoshop, I can't use Photoshop unless I use a Wacom tablet. I, I, I religiously use a Wacom tablet with Photoshop. But for some reason, I hate using the Wacom tablet with Lightroom. I'm not sure why. So I'm using a mouse and doing the best I can. So just bear with me. Okay, so... I think we did a pretty good job. So let's hover over this button and see where the mask is. And you can see I missed a big spot on his forehead and one a little bit under his each of his eyes. So we're going to come across there, make sure I get that. I'm going to get a smaller brush and get under the eyes. You can, of course, zoom in if you so choose, if it would help you. So we're going to go back to our button here and I'm still kind of missing under his eyes there a little bit but I think it's effective I think it's good enough but the perfectionist in me wants to go back and do it so okay so that's really not that spectacular you might say but what happens is we do enhance it then as we did previously we're going to go down to this HSL color BNW uh, tab and this time we're going to go to blue saturation and we're going to increase blue. Now you can see it's increasing his shirt and some of the water there. So then what we have to do is we have to jump back up to our brush and we have to make sure that blush is active by clicking on the little button. We're going to right click then and duplicate and it takes a second and that took out the rest of the blue that came through. So we're done with that brush. Now we have the blue saturation turned all the way up. We're going to go to luminance and we'll see if we could turn it down. Now you could see whatever was blue in the image is going to be affected by the luminance slider. But that's okay. I don't mind that at all. And we're going to turn blue down now and see how it really enhanced his eyes. Uh, you could try other colors too. Aqua might have an effect on his eyes too. A little bit just a little bit specifically right in that eye there and um, we could zoom in get an idea it takes a while to render too as I mentioned this is a such a huge file these these Nikon uh, D800Es are you know large uh, sensors um, so you could see where I missed with the brush when I zoom in so what we could do is we could go back uh, to our brush and we could even get a new brush and just so we could specifically work on this eye area here. Because we want to get rid of that color. See some of that bleed, some of the blue blood under the whites of his eyes. So we'll try to get rid of that. do the best we can. That's not bad right there. So now what we could do, we could get another new brush if we really want to make them look alien. And we're going to turn saturation up and we could paint on his eye. So I'm overdoing it on purpose. All right, just so you know. So don't send me hate mail, please. Uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. All right. And then, it takes a second to render. 
Okay, so that is in a nutshell, I guess, how you would do it uh, for the more common method people uh, do with portraiture to make uh, someone's eyes stand out in a black and white image. Uh, personally, I don't mind selective color at all. I don't care for it with the eyes. I It, it really has to be uh, special, I guess, uh, you know, of an image. And this, as I mentioned, that kind of looks stupid. That last, that last brush I put in there, um, that one right there, we're going to select it, and then we're going to hit the delete key and delete it. And you can see it still kind of looks silly. So, um, yeah, there it went away. That last brush put it over the top worse than it already was. So um, that's how you do it. Selective color. If you enjoy it, I encourage you to do it. I really do. Everyone needs to express themselves as they see fit. And if you guys have any questions or concerns, post them in the comments below. I'm, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, other than that, I really would like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And everyone that supports what I do by buying my Lightroom presets and my Photoshop actions, those of you that use my, um, my uh, Amazon affiliation uh, to purchase your Amazon uh, product, and those of you that made donations, just I'd like to take this time to thank everyone. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do all these videos. So thank you very, very much. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.